Welcome to episode three of the SNC Shy Talk series. Uh, thanks very much for watching the last two, and hope you watched the last two. Um, and last week we talked about the running we do in the in the GAR season. So I think this week we're going to go through a series of how you plan out your season. Um, and over the next couple of videos and couple of episodes, we'll go through each different stage. So for this one, we're going to go through, I'd say, what you do and how you plan out your, you know, your, your pre-season, your off-season. Um, with last week going through the running, we'll go through how we'd interact or how we'd combine the strength training and basically make a whole season out of it. Uh, when it comes to probably your season, uh, from a coach's point of view, we probably work at it in a, you know, how do we work the entire season together. So from a coach's point of view, we call them, like they're kind of our macro cycles. That'll be our, our entire season like broken down. Um, to break then like your whole macro cycle is broken down into a meso and a micro cycle. So your your meso cycle will be like say your season, so your off season, your pre-season, your maybe probably if it's a GA, you might say your league kind of campaign is is one and then championship and so on. It can be broken down a couple of different ways. Um, and then like micro cycle, you know, that can be like about each week at a time. So for this one, we'll probably focus on the very first stage. So that'll be our pre-season, off-season kind of one and how we'd kind of plan that out in terms of running and in terms of doing our, our strength block and what work we do there. So hopefully you guys will get some sort of indication what to do and how you kind of program it yourself. So any thoughts now? How would you start off? Um. Well, I suppose, obviously, this year is not the ideal scenario with gyms and stuff being closed. So it's obviously going to be very dependent on equipment. So where do we do this? We've got to show if you have equipment first, I suppose. <laughs> and we can kind of... Yeah, I suppose, yeah. What, yeah. what way do you look um, at doing your strength training? Like, like, do you work on, depending on equipment, or do you kind of go through, say, movement kind of stuff like like uh, as in, what do you mean? As in, like you kind of say, right, we're going to go through this movement patterns regardless of what equipment you have, and then find ways of loading it, or do you kind of go off? Oh yeah, it'd be something similar to that. Like yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Some, some yeah. people just think of things differently. So yeah, no. So yeah, so just work through your main movement patterns: push, pull, uh, hinge, and squat. Um, and then yeah, so load them whatever way you can. Either sing, single leg or double leg, single arm, double arm. Um, probably start off. I don't know. Do you do like a specific like high volume block? I don't know. I think it all, it all yeah, really depends. It works, like, like, I think I started, like, I do a lot of my programming for people based off what I do for myself, kind of like. So I kind of do that. I can yeah. nearly be like, two weeks ahead of them just to test things out, really. You know, I, I started doing a high volume block and I fucking hated it. Yeah, I think um, everyone hates them really. You know, I, I enjoyed the first week and then it, it got to the stage where there was just so much volume. Yeah. That cool. like my sessions are being really fucking drawn out. And I was like, yeah. if, I'm, if I'm if I if I hate it, I'm not gonna get anyone to do it as well. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Unless it's yeah, like, someone yeah. who, like, who told me they really, really enjoyed it. But like I don't know, I kind of went off it. I kind of just went to, can we get strong and get, you know, the kind of hypertrophy benefits from that as well? Yeah, um, we can a similar frame of mind as that, no. Um, unless maybe a complete beginner. If someone who's in very little gym work, he might start. Yeah, that's, I started off a couple kind of, of volume that. block. Not even a, like, like, and just build volume across. So we go like from four sets of six to four sets of twelve over four weeks or something like that. Yeah, and like then, even with the, I think with the beginners, I find that most of them actually didn't like the four sets of twelve. They, I had two or three who just thought it was really fucking drawn out. Um, yeah, it's a lot. Like, yeah, I think I think from a beginner point of view, they were so used to having say three sets of eight to ten or something that when it yeah. got three to twelve or four to twelve, it was like, fuck, what is this like? Yeah, it's hard. But um, yeah, what do you kind of focus on? What are you looking to focus on in your in your idea of your off season? Off season, so 
Well, oh, slash, slash preseason, whichever way you want to look at it. So strength is probably going to be the big one. Um, strength, probably some lower level of plyometric work. Um, and then probably, like, I won't say hypertrophy work because, well, it is hypertrophy work. Assistance work is probably going to end up being hypertrophy work as well. So you're probably going to work for your main exercises. So probably work in probably four, four to eight rep range, depending. And then probably go eight to eight to twelve for your assistance work. Yeah. Um, and then low level uh, plyos, probably work probably depending on the type. If it's very extensive, it probably can work up to ten reps. And then for your more intense stuff, so you can just like say a squat jump, probably wouldn't go past five reps for that really. Um, which, yeah, strength would probably be the main focus, yeah. depending on the purpose, and obviously, but um, strength that started the preseason anyway. Like, I suppose, like, we still don't know how long we're going to have. So, if we've uh, if we're eight weeks out from going back to training, like, if you get four, two, four weeks blocks, so four weeks of strength, and then probably four weeks of probably more explosive work, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's going to be dependent on the thing we have, really, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Like, uh, it's 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 hard to hard to kind of put together, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm kind of a similar idea. Like, I like I come from like kind of the injury background, so I'd have a lot of the work at the start. If you know your if you're miles out, like I'd have a lot of the work on trying to can we get those little bits of niggles cleared up? Um, can we get you know any sort of movement? issues that are there that's causing maybe those little niggles that are constantly appearing can we get them kind of cleared up um at the same time like i won't like i kind of like to call my warm-up and movement prep where i kind of address all that kind of shit like um yeah yeah, you yeah. Know, in, instead of getting that your whole session bogged down maybe it depends you know if it's something where i can use the session to help retrain some sort of movement or help use it to some sort of rehab degree then yeah fine fair enough like um I think I get, I get that movement prep kind of thing like um, as my area where I try to get those little niggles sort of those little um, movement issues that I have looked at and then go into some sort of strength training. Um, that's just kind of the way I've, I've done mine so far. Like, and it's, it hasn't been too bad. Like, it's, it's getting people through it. Like, yeah, what would, be the, what would be the main kind of niggles you're seeing? Just main stuff you're seeing that you have to work on it like a lot of people have some sort of like hip thing like or yeah and it's not even just hip but you know I could see there like hamstring issues or and like not even at the time like you might say like oh throughout the season like you know I was I was struggling with hamstrings or you have a couple of hip flexor issues there's the odd uh, Achilles kind of uh, issue but mm. um, they're kind of the main ones now like you have little small different ones like for different people but like they're the kind of the big ones um and then like you have the issue of when someone comes in they say like they have a recurring hamstring or they have a recurring quad issue and i'm kind of like well do you know what i'm not going to go down the route of just strengthening your hamstring because that's probably not realistically your cause anymore like if it's a recurring no, issue probably not um so what, what i'm finding is it's either a lot of issue of their um a hip issue or uh from their foot, um, yeah. You know, okay. What kind of stuff do you do for the foot? Like I'm kind of looking at to say, can can they get proper movement out of the foot? Like, can yeah. they can they can they pronate and supinate? Can they get uh, big toe extension? Um, no, there's a lot of like, if if they're if they're struggling to get into like, I think pronation is kind of demonized a little bit. But if they can't get into pronation, you know, that's having a massive knock on effect in Achilles. That's having a massive knock-on effect on hip rotation, and yeah. you know that's it's having such a compromising effect up the chain. Like, um, so I think a lot of the time, like if because I knew I have so much time to work on things, like if people have any sort of issues, it's either addressed from the ground up, kind of what I've gone with so far. Like, um, can we get feet moving? Okay, can we get you used to moving in and out of pronation, supination? Can you do it? Um, can you get big toe extension to be able to propel 
and then we'll work on like you know hip rotation stuff in sync with that like so if you can improve your your foot moving capabilities if you can improve your hip rotational and hip strength capabilities it's kind of cleared up quite a lot of things um and i suppose like at times i've gone further and i don't know if you listen to your man david gray rehab quite a bit do you uh a little bit yeah a little bit his stuff with the chest and the, the rib cage has been really like, it's, it's very interesting isn't it it's mad and like, it's only the more so that i've listened to him and the more so that i've kind of like like thought about it and then seen it in with people that i've kind of like, right yeah that when you actually kind of play it, like... um i think that's where i was coming from with a lot of the questions of the front squat and some of those uh in some yeah. days like um so i think like with beginners out there that that's why i've gone to front squat uh just based off stuff that he said like um but yeah like i've really noticed it especially from what it, the knock-on effect that having that flare rib cage has had in people's pelvis and has had under hip kind of movements yeah. like so that's kind of what i've looked at in doing that movement prep stuff first um a lot of that shit like and a lot of people's stuff has ended up being the same like my my own movement prep stuff is nearly the same thing that they're doing just to different yeah, well, yeah probably of, uh, like people fall into like brackets really like don't they yeah you and know, as, the, you, you can think, you can face probably the majority of people in one bucket and yeah the rest and into another like i think as many times as many people who say like oh and like you know it doesn't that one thing fits everyone but there are yeah, the most things are, fit everyone now. <laughs> there are trends you do see like and it yeah. just, it, it's only like what level are they on the scale like you know if i have someone who's doing some sort of footwork you know someone might be at a more advanced level than somebody else like but they're still doing footwork um now that kind of be, fits into the not one skill fits all because they're not all doing the exact same thing but they're doing a variation yeah. of the same thing like um but that's kind of the shit i've done so far and um the movement prep kind of stuff and then it was a case of as you're saying like do you do a volume block or do you do your strength block um or if it's someone who needs a lot of work do they just do a blend movement prep into into their strength program just to get better at that like yeah, but like that's a very individualized case. Like if you're, I suppose if you're generalizing it, then yeah, it's yeah. A case. Of, it's an argument of do we do a volume block or do we do a strength block? Yeah, I know. But um, just with the with the move with the kind of injury stuff, like you find that even just like by loading stuff, like that you get reasonably good results. Like but, you know, like you say, if you were, I know you're saying you work on the foot and the hip and stuff. You find that you get any like if you were say heavy single leg work, like full full range motion single leg work, do you find that as effective as it was? Yeah, like, like there's that kind yeah. of stuff, it's all blended into yeah. it. Um, I think we work on like the small nitty gritty pits, and then it's like you know, we load it's yeah, only whatever yeah. we can't get done in your loading session that you do in the the small little bit like you know like it's the, yes. small, the, the small like little say hip rotational stuff or yeah, yeah. i think I've, I've added in a lot of david gray's isometric stuff with um the form order for looking at yeah like, say cold contraction kind of not stuff. nice <laughs> oh it's hard like, they're horrific aren't they <laughs> they are absolutely horrible and uh it's not gone down very well with some of the clients no i can imagine that <laughs> but um but no like they you know hopefully if they if they don't get any niggas out of it through the season then you know it's worth yeah, the time, it's it's worth the time put in like yeah like that kind of stuff's yeah. all put in beforehand and then if i can load if i can load things afterwards then um then i go and load things like so it's yeah but um yeah Pretty definitely yeah. It's, it's stuff is really it makes you think differently doesn't it yeah uh, uh, it's, it's yeah i don't know like he it, yeah, I, I don't know what to make of it really, to be honest. It's, I agree with a lot of what he says, Luke, but yeah, it's, it's I just, suppose I just don't really. There's just so much of it, like, it's just where you say. So much of it, it's hard to get your head around it, isn't it? Yeah, but uh, what way would you lay out, say, your, so if you're doing like an off season plan for somebody, um, like, just we, let's assume they have equipment or assume we can yeah. come up with different variations. What would you, how would you go about planning that? Um, so it would probably depending on the person I would, I 
I don't really, I sometimes I split upper and lower, sometimes I don't. Mm. Depends on the rest, because so at the minute I, in my own sessions I'm doing two two upper and one lower. Um, I'm doing one lower because I'm trying to get in two sprint sessions a week. Yeah. So you don't want to fry the lower body either. Um. So I'm doing that. So, and then what the session itself would look like then, probably. So your, whatever you call your A block, I suppose, would be some form of power movement-ish. So I might do three sets of three. If it's upper body, I might do explosive push-up. Uh, lower body, some form of jump. So say do a lot of, yeah, just, yeah, squat jumps so. Um, then you move into your strength exercise, so bench press, overhead press, something like that. Uh, even loaded push up, something for upper body, and then usually squat or deadlift for the lower body, preferably trap bar. But obviously, not everyone's gonna have that. And then, so probably work in the three, three, five range for them. And um, then your assistants worked in probably eight, ten reps, two, three sets. Um, yeah, that's kind of how my sessions look at the minute, anyway. Book it as it moves on. I probably move away from the, like heavy strength focus stuff and maybe on more like rate of force development stuff. So, like, um, like back squat jumps or something, or like, say, like maybe your hang clean and stuff like that. If, if, the, if the person can do it, or track bars, jumps, and stuff like that, and then your assistants work, then it'll probably be mostly kind of lower rep stuff, then lower rep single leg movements. Um, but there's, yeah, just probably a thousand ways of could plan it, like, but yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I know, like, ideally, in an ideal world, I'd probably use like the high low model. So you probably do your whatever your lower days, and you do your conditioning days, and maybe upper body on Monday, then lower body in sprints on Tuesday. Or you might be take Wednesday off, and then do the same thing on a Thursday and Friday again. But um, that does it just doesn't work for everyone. Yeah, exactly. friend with you can get straight from the pitch into the gym, but yeah, I don't know, it's just. Life, yeah. life gets in the way of that. <laughs> Massively, yeah. Um, yeah, I suppose the way I've done mine is at the minute, I think um, my own one, my own plan, I have three days of uh, three days of gym work and I tried to get, I, I tried to get one or two running orientated days in, but that hasn't really gone to plan personally. Um, <laughs> so I kind of have, I have two setups depending on you know which clientele have what so i have a setup of say three days and then a setup of two days um i think it all depends again advanced versus beginner um so if we go through the advanced one you have three days of gym work which is split into uh two lower body days one upper body day and the two upper, or sorry, the, the two lower body days will have upper body accessory work at the end of them. So like you're hitting lower body twice a week, and you're hitting up like upper body kind of kind of three times a week. Um, similar to yourself, the way it's set up would be like you know I'd have they'll all have movement prep stuff, then they'll all have some sort of. I think I started the lower body one with actual uh, low level plyometric work to start off with. Um, so I think everyone, everyone started off with some sort of I think it was a, like a broad jump and then a, a drop landing and then yeah. they, kind of, they kind of progress through as you as you move through and they're able to complete them all fine they all kind of progress through um, I have some doing depth jumps now with single leg bounds um, and got as far as you got to at the minute and then say for lower body day we'll go into I have your main heavy lift. So one day it'll be a squat, one day it'll be a, a deadlift. 
or if you have a trap bar, they'd both be trap bar. Um, again, somewhere else that's kind of loaded in three or probably up to about five reps. We are aimed to get from probably three sets of five up to progress to five sets of five. Um, then we'd, we'd reassess if after that. Um, and then it, it probably goes to some sort of single leg orientated stuff. So whether I have Bulgarian split squats, um, with a look to load them as much as we can without, you know, that quality of movement decreasing. Um, uh, then I can, you can mix that with some hamstring stuff. So I have Nordics in there or I have uh, single leg RDLs. Um, and then mix with some form of lateral stuff. So either uh, Copenhagen lifts, lateral squats, um, that kind of stuff. So I've also I've kind of copied David Gray's Copenhagen variation too, which also hasn't been very well. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like that kind of stuff is thrown in. And then, like, you know, you have your, ex- I have accessory shit thrown in, such as like, you know, like bicep curls and presses yes. and everything like just all, you know, all, always, always include bicep curls yeah, always got a curl. yeah. But like in fairness like you know it helps everyone feel good, good about themselves like you know yeah exactly yeah. Someone if, every, I think everyone enjoys it as a look so yeah like if you have well people who end up throwing around like gosh like what do you get a bicep curls like um big arms <laughs> what do you want big arms and a nice shoulder health if anything else yeah, like, yeah. But, uh, yeah. so look that's there um then I suppose up by day will be something similar. You've movement prep, then you've got some form of plyo stuff. So whether it's a uh, uh, med ball slams or whether it's med ball chest press or something like that. Then first one would be a uh, pull up. Um, I'm not a very not a, not a fan of doing pull ups to to long rep sets. I'll just get to if you can do five pull ups. We load it. Yeah, and then load it in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like once once you can get the five, I'm happy enough that we can you can start loading that. We can load that as heavy yeah. as we get you to load. Like I don't see why to just keep going. It's the same thing. Like you're doing a volume block or you're doing a strength block. Yeah. Um. Just get stronger pull ups. Fair enough. Like if you can do twenty pull ups, grand. I don't really I don't really care if you can do five and I can load you. Fair enough. Like. Yeah. Exactly. Um. Yeah. So that'll be that that main lift by itself, and then. <laughs> You're mixing bench press, some form of rows, uh, some sort of vertical pressing, pressing for shoulder health. Um, and yeah, and, and that, that kind of stuff. Like, and then like your second leg day would be something similar to the first day. Just uh, that main lift to be changed. If you just have a straight bar, but if you've got a, if you've got a trap bar, we'd ideally be doing trap bar constantly. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's where I was going to kind of after the minute. Um, some are progressing to making that first heavy lift is now a, a power style lift. So, you know, some are squat jumps instead of doing your heavy lift. Um, or we just move the heavy lift down the order, taking something else out, out at the end and you put in a squat yeah, jump or something at the start. Yeah, just put something ahead of it then, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's kind of it. I'm just trying to make sure that in some way there's a heavy lift, there's a lot of hamstring focus and there is some lateral components so we're not really neglecting that kind of groin area like yeah um yeah and that was kind of just what i've done so far then we've thrown in two uh tempo sessions in somewhere in the week wherever we can fit them in where it's not like you know getting in the way of everything else um or like the strength sessions aren't getting in the way of tempo runs or whatever suits yeah um i suppose that's for someone who's kind of at a good level for someone who's on the beginning I've just gone two full um, full body days so that kind of middle day is gone um, so they'll they'll start with a similar layout of just doing movement prep some power exercise uh, leg strength work usually single leg if they're the, if they're beginning I'll just probably get them straight into doing single leg Bulgarians um, and then yeah, but I kind of just throw enough weight at the end, or either sprinkle or or sprinkle it in if you're super set, not sprinkle it in and lower body upper body just to get some lower body upper body, yeah, yeah, to get some sort of like uh, rest period there. Um, and then again, they've got two tempo sessions thrown in 
um ideally not everyone has got to there but like you know that's the ideal world plan yeah um, and then it's a case of if you've got no equipment we'll just do the exact same movement and we just find ridiculous ways of loading it exactly yeah just fill a school bag full of books yeah. or something yeah. or and then yeah. like you no know, worst case scenario we've no way of loading it I'll, I'll i'll have to revert back to doing the volume block yeah um or or, just, or i'll just throw in some form of tempo into what they're yeah, doing yeah manipulate the tempo or yeah. stuff um, um, I think that's just the way I've gone about those so far. Do you any like um, isometric work with people who say don't have any equipment? Like, yeah, so like, like isometrics. Did you ever yeah. see any of them into pulling into the towel and stuff? Yeah, I've actually seen a few of them. Yeah, I, I um, used them a bit with a couple of people. I, I think they're actually quite good as well. They're pretty effective. Yeah, like you're getting maximum maximum muscle contraction, like and stuff like so. Yeah, exactly. Like they're, yeah. they're probably a good. They're a good thing to add in if you've no equipment. Yeah. Um, I think who was who was a, uh, Graham Morris has some good stuff on YouTube if anyone wants to look at that. So like they're like for your like you can put your say into that kind of track bar position. So and just hold the towel at both sides and just pull as hard as you can against it. Like you're probably getting reasonably good strength strength adaptations yeah. over that as well. Like so you know it's if you were getting in there yeah it's something like you probably nearly wouldn't have even gone to uh yeah exactly it's, 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 it's yeah, right, i think i said you know you're, you're sure i think it's out of the box and it's the most basic shit that you overlook just by not even thinking about it like yeah exactly um, See, even even isometric holes like you know like a split squat hole or something like yeah you know, it's really really good for like tissue quality and stuff like that like you know so yeah but i suppose that's been one good thing about covid and everything is gonna make you Made you kind of think outside the box and kind of move Stop. away from kind of the conventional side of things. Yeah. Like I just kind of took the approach of that, right, we, we can't barbell squat fine, but like the squat movement is still a squat movement regardless of what we load it. Exactly, uh, yeah. It doesn't, that, it doesn't matter how you load it. It's just... Yeah. All right, so I literally just like wrote down, from plan out session, I'll write down all the moves I want to cover. So whether it's squat, hinge, lunge, uh, pull, vertical push, vertical pull um, sorry, vertical push horizontal push um, jumps throws like, can we get all them into your session and just how do you load, like if it's a hinge, how do you load a hinge yeah. <laughs> like I've yeah, lads just... fucking deadlift in a school bag like and yeah. <laughs> it's, it's mad yeah, like. overhead pressing, just school lad things isn't it? yeah, yeah. There's, there's loads you can do you just have to be a small bit inventive sometimes don't you yeah or the, the bed sheets in new one actually I've used the bed sheet for a uh, TRX row the TRX rows yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh, yeah but it works though, you know it's, you get a laugh out of it and stuff like but it's, it's still effective like you're still doing the exact same exercise as a TRX row or you know even a dumbbell row or something like that you're getting the same movement pattern or you're loading it so you know yeah, exactly, exactly. It's not stupid if it works. No, exactly. Like you're just, you're just yeah. overloading the movement. Like. Yeah. That's all it is. Um, what about, I suppose, injury prevention and stuff would probably be, this would be the main time of the year, I suppose, to implement a lot of that. Um, what would be kind of your go-to? Uh, I like to, to be honest, I just view... Injury prevention and strength training on the exact same scale. Just yeah, I'd be similar enough for that it's too. Just, it's a different end of the same scale. Like you know, injury rehab to strength training. Like it is still strength training. You're just at different stages of the yeah, process. Yeah, it's a spectrum, like isn't it? Yeah, that, that's all it is. Like so, yeah. like, if you're doing ACL rehab when you're doing a straight leg raise, you're still strength training. Like if you're doing, yeah. if you're in the gym and max health and you're doing. Uh, you know, eighty-five percent fucking Bulgarian split squat. You're still strength training. It's yeah, it's the same thing. It's just you're you're at different places at different times. Um, I I literally, I literally just use strength training as your injury prevention. Like you have, you can have everyone. Like you'd have you could ha you could have people in stretching and foam rolling as their injury prevention. But if you just have someone doing a fucking RDL to end range or to full range of motion, if you're someone yeah, doing it's... a full range of motion, like you're getting a better stretch through true load yeah um, exactly while you're strengthening it 
Yeah, and it's I, actually creating actual changes within the muscle as well, as yeah. opposed to just like you know very acute change. Yeah, it's exactly. neural changes, like you know. So, yeah. and then um, if you can get, if I can get someone to start implementing plyometric work, you're creating so much more tendon stiffness there to help yeah. reduce injuries when it goes back to sport. And then when it comes to can we introduce tempo running so I can get them used to high speed running to get their body actually used to high speed running, then. To me, that's all injury prevention, really. Um, the only kind of thing I'd look at in particular was if someone had, you know, a history of a recurring hamstring strain. Like what's what yeah, what's move, like what, what movement issue is causing this? And like, you know, it is usually something to do with something either below or above isn't moving well or isn't doing its job. Yeah. Um, it's it's generally not the area that's injured that's caused that area to be injured. Yeah, I think especially if it's recurring, it's never going to be a yeah. strength issue. Like, know, fair, like, fair, fair enough if you had like, an impact injury and you snapped the cruciate or if you had an impact injury and like you tore ankle ligaments. Like, you know what, that's something, yeah. that's something that couldn't be prepared for. Like, you know, and that's different. But if it's something where you could completely, not like you completely, but you, you could have, if you move better, you would have prevented it. Or if it's a, case of because something tore because it's compensating for some other area not doing its job yeah. then right we look at that um how are you moving overall how's your foot moving how are you are your hips moving as they have great talks about what's your rib cage like yeah um yeah that kind of stuff is what i kind of try to niggle or nail down in your moving prep area um and then if it is say some sort of movement issue through the foot or through the hip, I'd probably integrate that into a Bulgarian split squat. And yeah. if they can't, you know, if they're spending a lot of time in one area of their foot in a split squat, like, you know, through that squat, can I get them to change where the force is going? Yeah. You know, so as they descend or as they... Like, they're putting the force through, like, the say the outside of the foot you try and divert them onto the big toe or something like that yeah or if like, I, I don't mind them squatting down like into their heel and then as they you know as they're coming back up can we transfer force through the midfoot like yeah um, towards the toes yeah like you're, you're just mimicking the running pattern there like you know you're mimicking running pattern of gait as you strike and as you come through midfoot and as you toe off like you know you're, you're trying to mimic that in the gym like you mm. know um if you can do that in the weight room under load like Oh well and good. Occasionally we have to, you know, decrease that load to get that movement okay. Um and then we'll like, you know, we'll, we'll add on top of good movement, like, but if there's no point just adding on top of it just for the sake of adding on top of it, like um load wise. But um yeah, that's probably all I'd yeah. do injury real yeah. kind of way. Like there will yeah, be no, there will be do... hamstring focus, like of course, like with uh choose their Nordics. Yeah, I have Nordics in. Um, you don't, yeah. What do you think? Are, are they, I, I don't think they're the be-all and end-all. No, I'm, um, nice. I'm not a massive fan. I think they're actually too advanced for most people. Yeah, most people can't do them. Uh, I, I can't do a Nordic. Like, I could maybe do one. But yeah. I, I'm, my breaking point is is way too high up for it to be actually effective. Yeah, and you'll have, you'll have it thrown out that it's uh, 70% or 80% or whatever the fucking percentage is effective. Yeah. But... Uh, is that just because they're doing something as opposed to doing nothing? Exactly, this, yeah. Like, like you watch, uh, mo like you watch like, most people do a Nordic and it's, you know, they get down a couple of degrees and they collapse and it's like, yeah, they, yeah, what's, exactly. what's the point? Like, you know, yeah, you may, you're probably not getting, getting a whole lot out of it. Like, yeah. you. like you may as well uh -huh. do, a, do, a, do a leg curl as opposed to doing, you may as well do a heavy loaded leg curl I, yeah, I would, as opposed to doing do a Nordic. Like, what's the point like there? Like, two, 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 up, two legs up and one leg down. Yeah, um, do that. or even or I like the um, ham hamstring sliders. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. them. You can load up the hip and um, still get a good good amount of eccentric stress in it. Yeah, I'd rather go to that. Um, or if I can have someone who's doing a Nordic, right? We'll do one or two reps in Nordic. Can you do them? Grant, let's continue. If you can't do them, let's back off. Yeah, there's something you can do. Like, yeah, like you're literally you're, you're like I always use the whole phrase of like what benefit can you get out of the time that you put into it like and um, if you're just belly flopping on nordic like what's the point that's yeah that exactly yeah you're just you're just doing the exercise for the sake of doing it like really eventually yeah and again it, it's you know you, you see people doing like a hammer machine it's just thrown in just to look like a 
Yeah. I don't know. It's just if you can do it, it's good, right? That's fair enough. Exactly, you know, yeah. there's, there's no, you, you have to you have to build towards it. Like it's like anything else, I suppose, isn't it? You have yeah. to get the loading right and stuff. Like you know, the, the eccentric movements are the harder movements. Like yeah. So I don't know why you go straight to an eccentric. Like you know, um, I'd ideally have someone do David Gray's version of the isometric uh, foam roller uh, glute bridge for hamstring strength and for you know hamstring calf core contraction there we get really really strong there oh well and good we move to maybe some other isometric we move to some sort of different single leg stuff and then you know end stage we go to a nordic or nordic or something like that yeah or or a bosch plank or something like you know um yeah they're actually another something like the bosch planks and that they'd actually be probably quite useful to add in yeah, they're also you can add them in pretty early as well, like the asymmetrics. Yeah. Like, um, I find they're fucking hard, they're hard enough to hold. Like, <laughs> they are, they are to be fair. Yeah, but there's probably some kind of similar stimulus to an eccentric in them as well. Yeah, just the fact that you're trying to resist your body from falling down. But, yeah, I, I, I'd agree there. Like, yeah, um, I was also having, I don't know what you think of it. <clears throat> um, a debate in my head now I haven't really looked into it it was just as I was watching someone doing Nordic the last day of as they start off and they get to a certain a certain degree and they're kind of holding like you know you're not really they're not really lengthening they're lengthening as far as they can get and it's kind of at the stage yeah. where they're like I'm, I'm, I'm holding as much as I can like you know you're, you're eccentrically loading and then it's an isometric contraction it's kind of turning four, into an isometric four, actually, four yeah so in my head, I was like, are we just as well then, if someone can't do a Nordic, to get an incline bench, have them kneel on the bench and just pull up into an isometric contraction at that lengthened position of the muscle? Yeah. Will that get you just, true, as, yeah. much, just as much benefit? Because you're, you're really not eccentrically loading because when you think of it, like, you know, you're at a 90 degree knee flexion angle and like, you lengthen a little bit, you know, are you really essentially loading there if you haven't actually lent in that muscle that yeah. before you belly flop? That's um, true, actually, yeah. I don't know. We, it was just it was a complete thought process that happened to pop into a head yeah. last week. And I was like, do you know what? I might actually got someone else's opinion on this just to see what they thought of it. Like I know I didn't look into it. Uh, I didn't even think of asking anybody else. I just had a like a bit of a brain wander. Yeah, you know, yeah, I get a lot of them as a so but, um, well, it's like definitely you're, interesting, like you know, it's, you're, you're literally reversing that uh, glute bridge that David Gray does quite a lot of you on your back to you being on your front pulling the other direction, like yeah. It's like I know you're not getting you're, you're not getting um, the ca same the similar calf co contraction as you would. Um, cause you're not really using the foot to press in and twist, but you're still getting some. But um, I don't know. Just a thought process I had but while adding that in. Before you went to Nordic. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, we're trying it, wouldn't it? Yeah. If it works. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Like, you know. Call it know. The, uh, the, the winter's hold. <laughs> the Bosch hold. Stuff. The yes, SSB <laughs> Strike Talk hold. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so, where else would you go? So, that's the injury prevention. Um, so like without going straight from there into your season, then it's probably like, you know, there's a lot to cover there for your preseason. Like, yeah. You know, it's a case of if you know how long you have, you know how many blocks to go into. Um like it ideally I'd like to probably work in a four maybe the first week would be a four week block. Then you'd have a five week block with the first week being a deload of the new block. Yeah. Um enter, what, what way do you program your deloads? Like, do you program them at the end uh, of the block or the start of a block? Uh, don't probably be the start of a block. Hmm, that'd be if the same, you build yeah. If you're building intensity, so you're building up whatever volume or intensity to the end of one block, for the next block, you're going to probably drop down anyway. 
Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Now. Yeah, ideally, I probably actually wouldn't use D loads much at all. I'd probably train auto regulate. Um, yeah, and just go off RIR or RPE. Or to say uh, eight out of ten. Yeah, you know that might be. I don't know. Say we squat hundred kg this week, and it's an eight out of ten. And next week you can only get to ninety for eight out of ten. I think by doing that, you can probably you don't have to deload. Maybe I don't know. I yeah. could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I suppose it's um, all it's all subjective of what that person probably yeah. perceives their in, OP and order to be like. You know what I mean? It's yeah. I suppose. Yeah. And then, you, like when you move into in season, you don't really have time for. Not that you don't have time, but I don't know. It's hard to know what, what, when do you work your. Your D loads, like you know. Yeah, I suppose when you move into D load, it's, that's it's really a case of can you go high low as well as as well as you can, like. Yeah. Um. um can you try I spread? I was to do D loads, like I sometimes I I kind of plan in nearly six week blocks. Mm. So if it was a sprint block, I plan in six weeks. So the first to be a kind of a build up for first three weeks, then week four would be you pull back. To maybe the weight you did at week two, mm-hmm. maybe. Um, so then, so if you the graphs, your, your intensity would be going kind of up, down, and then up. So the kind of trend would be quite steep. If you get yeah, it. like a kind of regulating, yeah. If yeah, I was to do that. a deload, that's kind of how I do it. But I, I don't know. I don't know what the best way to do them is, to be honest. <laughs> no, I think, I think I've done, I've done a deload for most of mine. I'd say the ones that start around the same time, they've done four weeks, you know. After the four weeks, it's kind of, I was kind of like, right, you know, we've got quite a lot of it done here. You've gone from doing nothing to doing, uh, introducing tempos to as much strength as you can get done. Um, and it was a case of then being, we're going to start the next block, I'm kind of made up five weeks, and the yeah, first, I the, get you. The, the, the first week of that, it's nearly an introductory week. Yeah, exactly. It just, was it was nearly just the volume was halved, intensity yeah. was intensity was the same, volume was cut in half, um, but like the, all all the exercises, if it, if it was any different than the first block, your that that week was you know the same exercise that's going to be in the next in the next block of four weeks. <clears throat> Um, yeah, I get you. So yeah, it was introducing it to what was going to happen over the next four weeks, just at a very, very small volume in comparison to what was yeah. going to happen. But um, yeah, I think that's all I've done so far. Um, and then I just cut back in the run and said, "Look, you know, take a break, um, refill up on calories, refill, refuel, um, go back to maintenance for a week, and that was it, really." What do you, what way do you approach that? Actually, now that I, I mentioned that. If you have, you know, kind of step out of lane a little bit and say, if apart from someone who has just doing strength work, what way do you approach their, I suppose, energy intake throughout uh, your, your off season? Now, what way do you view that? It depends on the person, really. Like, um, like it's, 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 it is an ideal thing to target body composition. So, yeah. depending on the person, like, if they need to gain weight to be in a surplus they need to lose it to be in a deficit there's yeah. I don't know but yeah this <laughs> don't yeah. I, I, I'd be the same yeah I'd yeah uh, I, I don't I, yeah I, I don't know <laughs> I, I have a lot of lads who are who are trying to do the same like no I think majority of the ones I've worked the bar one or two are in the same boat you know they're trying to like lean down at the end yeah, of the day, I, think, no one... I think most of the time, most people are probably leaning down the off season. To be honest, aren't they? <sighs> I don't know. Is that... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I know I am, and I need to. But <laughs> um, yeah, like suppose, like you know, the linear you can go back. I suppose, like you know, you're yeah, less, I suppose it, it's, you're less it's mass completely moves. dependent on the person, like isn't it? Yeah, I suppose, like you know, if you're someone who's who is quite heavy, like you know, like, they can lean down, and you know, it means they've less mass to move. So realistically, like you know, they're their speed yeah. could, could could well improve because of less mass to move. Exactly. Yeah. Again, exactly. if you're someone, probably improve. Yeah. Like again, if you're someone who needs to really put on some muscle mass, you know, there's no harm in them putting on a couple of kilo. Like, 
Yeah, if they, if they do put on a little bit of fat, it's this. Oh, like that, that, that's going to happen. Like, you know, I think if, you, if people are worried about putting on some fat because they're putting on some muscle, like, you know, it's not your biggest concern. Like, if you're in this, yeah, if you're, if exactly. you're at the stage, Rick, you have to put on some muscle mass, like, you're going to get fat mass there as well. It just happens. It's just not, it's going to happen. Like, nothing yeah. too extreme that you're going to be, like, you know, mad. Yeah, come back to the fucking, like, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I suppose, it, like, I'd have everyone probably on, like, at least two grams per kg of body weight of protein. Oh, yeah, I think I'd manipulate yeah i'm pretty sure I, 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 I think i've advised that for nearly everybody regardless like yeah just because they don't get anywhere near enough anyway so no no if, but if, yeah, if they get half that much. Tourists, like you see some people in the and you see like they're just not eating enough carbs no and they're you know it's yeah and it's, it's hard it's hard to know with some people like do they need do they need the two grams of the two grams per kg of protein or do they just need more carbs? I think, yeah, it's, it's hard. Like, I think, I think that a lot of people will probably, not that they overeat fat because it's not terrible, it's not that bad, like, but I suppose for, for someone, if they're, if they're an athlete or if they're involved in sports, if their fat intake is too high, it's probably hampering their, their carb intake, it's probably hampering their, um, their, their energy and their ability to, Produce high outputs, I suppose, really, isn't it? Yeah, especially especially once the season restarts and that like, that intensity of training is going to go through, oh, it's going to scale through the yeah. fucking roof, like you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but then I think it's funny, like as soon as you go back to football, that whole thing's thrown out of like, uh, or the whole thing is thrown out of you know sports nutrition this and sports nutrition that, like, yeah, you know, like oh well and good, but if you can't get nutrition nailed down at the start, like, what's the point in going? Exactly. To sports what's the point? No, um, yeah. I keep using analogies like lately, and <laughs> like I try to like, you know, make things sound like rationalize in my head or to somebody else like oh, what it would work out as like, and like in my head it's like if you know if someone who's throwing sports nutrition at you like I'm like right, fair enough like that's like you putting fuel into the car, but like if your engine is no oil like what's the fucking point like? Yeah, yeah, then, it's like, true. Yeah, that's a good one actually. Yeah. Like you can put as much fuel into the car as you want, like, but if that engine can't move because there's no oil in the engine, like, yeah, like, what's the fucking point? Like, so like, if you can't get your nutrition understood and you've got some form of, of understanding of energy expenditure and energy intake, like, yeah, that's it, understanding exactly. how you bring in like all that other stuff, like, yeah, that's fine. Like, you've no idea, and you've no idea that, but yeah, go ahead and carb load, like, that's fine. <laughs> that's it, yeah, <laughs> carb loading. Okay. No, yeah. no go usually, carb. usually my, my carb loading is probably working for most people is because they haven't touched the carb yeah all or week it's, like, so or it's like nowhere near enough like yeah or it's all the pasta before a game <laughs> we, waged solid or I'll have some fucking jellies or some jam before the game for that that's it yeah. Like, that's it yeah the pack of wine gums before the match is going to make yeah. a fucking savage difference or it's thing of like you know I'll, I'll carb load and have a coffee yeah, like you know the two hours before the game, like whereas you know, for the last six months I haven't even fucking looked at my nutrition. Like, That's it, yeah. You know, it's like doing like it's like doing nothing in the gym and it's like I can go back and be great, like you know. Yeah, it's true, isn't it? Yeah, let's go back and hit a one or M like Yeah, like so I don't know. I know it's a bit out of out of lane, but I think it's the more it's kind of merged together the better. Yeah, exactly. You're just gonna have to take can you the holy, a holistic approach, I suppose, really, don't you? Yeah, like, I think it's... it's just definitely. kind of, everything, everything runs into... Everything leads into each other, like, you know, and... Yeah, has a knock-on effect of the next thing, like... Yeah, exactly. So, um, I suppose, takeaways from that. <laughs> We've yeah. just got no rabbit holes again for another hour. <laughs> <over> there, but, <laughs> um, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, go ahead. I suppose, like, take away, like, look, if... If you're someone who's new to it, uh, if you're planning a pre-season trend trend, I'd probably just stick to two full body days, personally. Um, and then I'd probably stick two type of sessions in. That's the way I'd plan my thing out. If you're someone who is advanced, has all the equipment in the world and all the time in the world, if you can get three sessions in, you know, go yeah, do three sessions, three and, sessions and do your two separate in. sessions. Yeah. No, um, yeah. and do your two tempo sessions um, and like you know follow 
the structures that we kind of like bought like similar the structures are the same really we've kind of bought it like, exactly yeah the, um, structure, the structure is probably the least important thing really yeah it's just how you plan your week you know you've yeah. you have seven days really um you can do it over two weeks either if that makes more sense to you or if it's easier for you to visualize do it in two weeks um like plan your two weeks out instead um yeah it's, it's really whatever whatever works like that's probably what i go with yeah, um, I suppose I didn't I didn't identify what you think is your, your biggest weakness. Attack yeah. that. And yeah. um hopefully you'll go back, come back in a better place. Yeah, prioritize whenever, one, like. whenever we get to go ahead to go back. And look, if you need if you need any hand or anything, like just yeah. give one of us a shout. Like, you know, like we have we have people texting us asking about stuff and like we don't mind giving people a hand, like you know, we don't no. mind giving people um pointers and a bit of advice. Um Happy to help. Then, yeah, and then if you want to work one or two, it's just have to. That's just give us a shout. That's fine. Um, but yeah, like the, we we both kind of are doing Q and A's as well, like John Weeks. So like, you know, if you've got any questions, you can fire them right there. I got it. So hope that helps someone in their office. So, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And don't forget to share and um, share, like, leave, leave comments. comments and likes and all that kind of stuff. And, um, and tune in next week. Decide that the things that I tried were in my lap just to get high on. When I sit alone, come get a little known, but I need more than myself this time. Step from the road to the sea to the sky, and I do believe that we rely on. When I lay it on, come get to play it on all my life to sacrifice. Hey, yo, oh, listen what I say. Oh, I got your head. Now listen